Hey everybody, Delta Flight Gaming back again, and we are diving into the PlayStation Magazine demo disc number 33. Now, if you watched my last episode, that was number 19, so I have missed 20 to 31. I am still been trying to find them. I don't have, physically have them, I'm actually, like I said, I've been trying to look them up online because I have this odd, I don't know, just this odd interest in collecting demo discs. And I want to, you know, get as many of them as I possibly can. So, this is, as I said, number 33, which I believe came out in June of 2000. And I think from here on, I, if I remember right, if I, it's been a while since I looked at my collection, but they, uh, uh, they should all be, you know, in chronological order. There shouldn't be too much of a, a gap in between. All right, so let us see what. Grind session. All right, it's just the music sounds a little off. Legend of Dragoon, Deception 3, Smackdown. X-Men Mutant Academy, Threads of Fate, Gauntlet Legends, Vanishing Point, Rock Raiders, Rhapsody, Piercing Parlor. Whatever, let's check this out. Alright, Grind Session, Free Look, Airspin. Alright, so all our airspins. Man, that... that... Well, I'm, so let me kind of clear it up. Is like if you can hear the music kind of like clip, 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 like cut like that. I'm playing this on my PS3, and I have. I think I put the textures up, or like the disc speed up, or something like that. So it kind of has a tendency to do stuff like that. Day one song. John Cardiel. Arabeth Burnside, Pigpen. Uh, Day One Song is the only one that I know of. Ed Templeton. I, so it's only these two. Um, sure. SF mission, use R2 to view technical bonuses in the level. Completing a technical bonus adds time. Okay. Now, I know that this was a game that came out. I don't know how far out, like, if, it, if Tony Hawk 1 was out at the time or if Tony Hawk 2 was out. I knew that, obviously, there were, you know, huge competitions with each other. Wow. Wow. Well, thankfully, there's no. Wow, that was that was just bad. <laughs> okay. All right, I am like I am doing horrible at this. All right, that pretty much was it. There wasn't too much to it. It was just kind of a one-minute grind session. Uh, I know I want to do Legend of Dragoon, you know, by itself. So, uh, let's take a little dive into this. This, I think this is the game series where, like, you build traps. And, like, you just kind of have to, like... I don't, I don't know. I've only... I don't think I've ever played this one. I know I've played a demo, I think for the Vita? I think that was one that I played, where you're just kind of like creating traps for the enemies or something like that. I don't, it seems like some sort of a puzzle game, so I figured you might as well see where, well, I wouldn't say where it originally started from because this is the third game, but, all right, new settings. Um, yeah, all that looks good. I don't... doesn't sound like we're gonna hit any... 
copyright infringement. Alright, so we got all the lessons. Lessons, basic trap startup. Activate floor traps with X button. Squares wall and ceiling traps or triangle. Okay, blast bomb. Hmm. Activate the arrow. I mean. Wow, that even that, so they so the the floor trap resets quickly. The wall trap resets medium speed, and then the ceiling trap. Uh, what? So yeah, that, that pretty much was the whole game, was just, like, traps and... It's alright. It wasn't, like, the greatest game. Now, this game, my brother and I played the absolute hell out of when we were kids. Like, this was back when, you know, in the, the 90s wrestling, when it actually was WWF, not WWE. And, like, they got away with so much stuff back then. Like, the whole, like, bloody first blood match, uh, false count anywhere, or what is it? I think Liz is called false count anywhere. Like, the hardcore matches were super hardcore, and, like, I mean, it was just, like, insane some of the stuff they did. Now it's, I don't know, it just seems kind of, well, I mean, nowadays they couldn't get away with this. And this game was harder than I thought it was. At least the demo is. I don't know if they had the game set to a... Uh, to a specific... difficulty setting. But man, this game was... Uh, it was hard, but it was fun. Get up. And I love the fact that like with this, I can set... So, like, if you look under Triple H, you can see a little red, like, pulsating bar and how mine is full. Because I set it so I have, like, five of my uh, finisher moves. And it was just... It was crazy because all you needed to do was stun them for just that one second. And you could pull off a finisher. That was all it really took. Ow. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna put it against that. Oh, yeah, thought I had a chance. Uh, I, like I said, I beat, somehow, I beat that w, w, uh, WCW game. And I figured, you know what? If I can at least beat that one, I'll try to at least beat this. Let me at least go, you know, two for two on my wrestling demos. Yep. Come on. Oh. Nope. Not even a one count. Bam. I mean, at least, at least it's not like with the WCW that like really bad pile of Bam. Knockout. Knockout. Just like that, I'm two and zero on my wrestling games. Woo! Which means absolutely not a damn thing. <laughs> All right, what's next? X-Men Mutant Academy. Does not support analog mode. Well, guess what? It didn't load at all. Like, I let it sit for about a good, I don't know, four minutes, and I got all the way up to the loading screen, like, into the game, chose my characters, and moved on. And it just kept saying loading, and like three, four minutes later, and still nothing. This 
Threads of Fate. This game here was a game that I... I don't know. There was something about it, you know, like I said, this came out, like I said, in June of 2000. Uh, yes, one. Choose your character. Rue, a tale of a mysterious boy and mint a tale of a spunky girl. We're gonna go with Rue. Something about this game just kind of interested me. It was very humble, very small, you know, 2000, let's see, Final Fantasy 7 and 8 had come out. I don't know if 9 was out by then, at least on the U.S. shores. But it just kind of interested me because it was just so, it was different from what I was used to playing. And I've gone through here in the demo, I've gone through both stories. Both characters run the exact same plot, or through the exact same levels. So you'll see here in a minute. Press circle to jump. So it's like a side-scrolling RPG kind of game. But each character has different abilities. Like, he can transform into different monsters. And the... Uh, what's her name? Mint, she uses magic. Like, projectile, ranged attacks kind of thing. So it's, you know, it's kind of your play style as to what you would want to do. And what is... So I got that plant one. To transform back into Rue, hold down square and choose Rue. Like I said, I mean, this is a very simple, very humble game. Nothing too... At least it doesn't seem like it's anything too hectic or, you know, grind of a game. And this is now mint. Like I said, you run through the exact same... In the demo, at least. And I'm assuming it's probably the exact same game. Where you run through the same levels, just as different characters. You're getting... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. You're getting two sides of the same story. You know, you can either play as Mint and hear her and go through her story, and you can see what she goes through, and then play as Rue and get the other side. Now, with Mint, she, her plot, you know, her whatever, uh, is designed so her sister, who's, you know, younger sister, kicked her out of the kingdom or whatever, and now she's trying to get back because she's been essentially exiled. And then Rue, I can't remember what he said on the, down, on the prologue when he was introducing it. But, you know, he's chasing after something as well. And you both will face this demo, or demo, this boss. With Rue, Rue wasn't that hard to beat. His was relatively easy. This, she, uh, because the gameplay is so different with her, her jump attack is the one that does the most damage. So it took me three times to beat this boss, which kind of sucks. Ow. Yeah, I think like the first because I beat the I beat this demo the first time as Rue. And then I beat it again as Mint, and I didn't really take into account that, you know, they have different play styles. One is more, you know, tank style, the other one is more of a mage, range fighter. So it was kind of one of those, you know, you just gotta figure it out, and then that's that. Piece of cake. Time for some treasure hunting. And then run over here. And this essentially concludes the demo. There's got to be some clues in here about the relic. That's right. They're both so they're both searching for the relic. Each one has their own. Uh, what's the one I'm looking for? Character drive, I guess you want to call it. You know, like for her, as I was saying. You know, she's trying to get the relic back so she can say, Hey, look, I'm the rightful princess or heir to the throne. 
kind of deal. I don't know, honestly, I've been looking for this game, you know, in, at a couple of new and used game stores for a good while, just so I can at least, you know, have it in my collection, because it's been something I've been wanting to get for a while, you know, because I'm still collecting for the PS1. But, yeah, this plays out after... Yeah, those two guys right there, those are the mini-boss for the demos. You get a mini-boss and a full boss. And also, that's kind of the other thing, too, that I like about games like this, is it's those underground or, like, hidden gem kind of games that may not get as much attention as, say, like, you know, it's by Squaresoft, so it's by the same company that made Final Fantasy. You know, that's just it. It's Final Fantasy. They're known more, more, really well for Final Fantasy, but they're also like, yeah, we've also done this, too. Alright, this is Gauntlet Legends. Okay. This is kind of clunky. Not gonna lie. I, I remember old school gauntlet on the Nintendo. My uh, my friend who lived a couple doors down from me when I was a kid, we used to play it on the you know, original Nintendo. Oh, grab that key. Save keys to open doors and chests. Really? Mm -hmm. well, that, was, <laughs> that didn't sound good. Let's see here. That is fire. Got the key. I'm hitting him. I think I can't remember if this is I can't remember, but I think this is the game that got it was like reviewed better on the 64. Like I think they just said it controlled better. I don't know. Alright, and I do believe. I have to double check the disc, but I believe that the rest of them. Wow, IGN was doing reviews back in 2000s. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I think the rest, the, the piercing parlor was an anti-smoking ad. I do remember that one. Because that one was just weird, where it shows this kid like getting his tongue pierced, and then there's like, by some like creepy looking dude. And he was like, right after he goes, join me in a cigarette. And the, guys, the kid's like, what do you think, I am crazy? Like, it's just kind of one of those, I don't know. It was a weird anti-smoking ad we had back in the 90s, or just like 2000s. And what else was, oh, we got some frame skip. Or not frame skip, just disc skip. Which doesn't bode well for the rest of the trailers, which I checked out because that's pretty much all they ended up being were just trailers, but because there's the, my my demo disc is very heavily scratched. Oh nice, VW bus. The rest of the demo, the rest of the videos didn't fare too well. So I think that's just gonna wrap up this little demo disc. This little, you know, touch back into you know blast from the past kind of thing. So you guys Thank you guys so much for watching. Please feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we will check out the next demo disc next time. You guys stay awesome, be cool to yourselves, and I will see you in the next video.